Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft Server. It's episode 96 and today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. Whoa. I have not used shaders <laughs> in... Oh, how long has it been? I mean, it's been ages since I've used any form of shader pack in Minecraft. And wow, the lens flares are gorgeous. Oh, can you see it? Just poking th That is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Right, I think you know where we're headed. We need to locate one giant ocean base. I, I'm totally lost as to where I am. Wow. <laughs> it's like a totally different game. It is like a totally different game. Just so you know, I'm not going to play with shaders at all times. Just because I, I don't... I, as much as I love the way this looks, it doesn't feel Minecrafty to me. But I feel like I should activate them every now and again. I mean, come on, how could I not? But anyway, I've just flown past the village. So we should be coming into the base now. And here it is. Now, I have to say, I thought I was going to be able to see the sea lanterns a lot clearer than I can. <laughs> you really can't see them. Whoa. It actually looks a bit weird. <laughs> it looks so strange. I think I need to turn off the glass. The glass <laughs> has gone invisible. Wow. I mean, it just looks a bit weird. This looks a bit crazy though, but it all looks kind of strange. I think because my base is so, is so based around water. I'm actually surprised. I thought it was going to look really cool, but no, it looks, it looks a bit odd. <laughs> Still though, it does look quite impressive. Jeez, being underwater is a bit crazy as well. This is wacky. This is really wacky. Right, let's have a look then. I've just dropped down. Wow, this looks pretty enchanted. This looks like a big enchanted storage room. It does look really cool. Like it does look really cool, but I what I whenever I play with shaders, I always think the bright bits look way too bright and the dark bits look way too dark. Maybe that's just my eyes. But no, this is this is very nice. Really, really nice. Oh, I wonder what the aquarium's gonna look like. And open. Every time, every single time. Slime blocks look cool though. Wow, they look really cool. So does this place. Jeez. If I can get rid of these slimes. <laughs> okay, I think we should be safe now. Cool, but the glass, man. The glass is strange. The glass is odd. Am I the only one that thinks the glass is odd? That's beautiful, though. Wow. All right, there's one more place I want to go to. But before we go there, all the chunks are loaded. And yeah, it does look... It looks very cool from up here. Like, from all the way up here, near enough the clouds. That is a fancy-looking base. <laughs> really nice. Oh, and I like this. I do like this. Cool. One thing that they have done is they've made the floor of the nether hub look absolutely mental. I think this is the look that Iskar was going for. He's stacked loads of layers on glass on top of one another to create like a void look. This has created a really good void look. Like this is an awesome void look. Yeah, that looks so fancy. Nothing else in the nether room looks particularly fancy. It just looks like standard Minecraft, but that, that looks good. Anyway, I think we all know what I want to look at here. I mean, I, I should do a quick loop of the cake because the cake is looking very nice. Very, very nice indeed. Let's see if we can catch some, some lens flares off of it. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. 
We're at golden hour at this point in time. This is the perfect time to be using shaders because we've got the lovely long shadows. But I think we all know where we're heading. We're actually going to head underground because I want to see what Scar's massive community builds area looks like. I'm excited. I am excited. I have a feeling it's just going to look super dark. But it's also going to look quite mystical. That's like the, the goal here. And it kind of does. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks really cool. It, it does look really nice, and I love the way that the beacons look. That looks really cool. But I have to say, I think shaders are only really good for things that are above ground. Things that are below ground, they just look dark. Really dark and really moody, which I know is like a cool style. I personally love dark and moody. But I don't know, I'd like like a little bit more sparkle. I suppose. So there we go. Those are the shaders. Now, please do enjoy this view because I have spent probably about 25 minutes loading up all of the chunks around it. I then took a screenshot at quad resolution. That was my plan and it crashed out my computer entirely. So I had to go back around and relight and reload all of these chunks again because they seem to have a habit of unloading and also the chunks are very slow to load when you're playing with the shaders. So this is it. This is the mumbo jumbo base in all of its glory with shader mod on. Okay, now let's pop back into ugly old Minecraft and actually do some projects. This feels odd and it feels slightly ugly, but it also feels familiar. I, I feel more comfortable in this version of Minecraft. Okay, right. Plan number one for today's Hermitcraft episode is we're going to head down inside the nether room, inside the nether portal, and we're going to connect this thing up right the way into the nether hub. So here's the strategy. First things first, I'm going to do the floor, and I have I have no clue how I'm actually going to do it. I kind of thought maybe some birch wood stairs going up the center. Whew! I swung my axe then, he walked straight in front of me. I, I, but yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking birch wood stairs, because quartz stairs would be really expensive, but I don't know if they look good. So maybe we could have quartz stairs, Let's let's imagine that this is a quartz stair, and then on either side we have glass. That looks pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. And then every now and again we'd have sea lanterns on both sides. Yeah. Okay. Still gonna need a ton of quartz though. For the first time since I did it, I have lost my ender chest. I have no clue where I've put it. Did I place it inside one of these chests here? Maybe when I was picking up sea lantern stuff? Oh, I can't believe it. I'm disappointed in myself. My little blue block in my inventory is currently vacant. So this is what it's looking like at this point in time. And I have to say, it looks, in my opinion, pretty cool. It's just, it's like a continuation of what we have going on down here. I'm liking that design. And then the quartz will go up like this, and it will just continue on right the way up. All the way up to, I mean, all the way up there. This is a long old tunnel. Okay, do I have enough quartz? I think I've got enough quartz. Yeah, let's try our best to just make some progress here. Finally, I have made it up to the top. So this is where we are going to be. I've just taken out all of the blocks underneath and I've made a little bit of progress on the walkway. So that is kind of popping up down there. Jesus! <laughs> My word. Oh, I'm so dangerous. They shouldn't give me Elytra. You should have to take an Elytra flying license before you actually get them in Minecraft. Right, I would say we're about halfway done now. And this is what everything is looking like. Yeah, I'm actually surprised by how well this has translated into this. And I'm also very happy that I decided to use quartz stairs as opposed to birchwood. The only thing is, is that if you walk off the edge, even the tiniest bit, you do hit that side. So that might be something to complain about, but to be honest, I'm I'm not too fussed by that. I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not the kind of guy that, that's worried about that sort of thing. We're just gonna have to run in a straight line. I'm just gonna have to make sure that I can run in a perfectly straight line up these things. Good, okay, up to the top, and then we can do the walls and the ceiling. Nice. So that's that. Now, funnily enough, this has actually worked out perfectly. This module right here lines up very nicely with this floor level, and then we're going to have a little while of tunnels, and then I don't really know what to say about this place, because there is someone's tunnel heading off in this direction, I imagine. It's either Joe Hills or that looks like Cub Fan. 
But either way, our tunnel now matches up with this area here. So I, I don't think I'm going to do any work up at the top just in case this person wants to actually build up this area and make something cool. For now, I'm just going to run it up into this zone. It's amazing what one block of lava can do in Minecraft, isn't it? Look at that. That's going to take months to go down. I'm trying to take out all of this nether rack, and I'm not going to have to wait for this caterpillar of lava to travel down my staircase. One thing that I always struggle with in these things is how high I should make my ceiling. I think it needs to be higher than that. I think it needs to be a little bit higher than that. This is going to use tons upon tons of quartz. We might actually have to go out on a bit of a quartz mining session because this is pretty much it. But if we have, so we'd have a slab there, then we'd have dark prismarine on either side, and then going up the center, I guess we could just have a full line of, a full line of sea lanterns. So it'll look a little bit like this. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, and then this is how high the roof would be. Plenty of headspace, you don't feel like you're, you're near death in. So that is that. One side has now been completed. We have got all of the blocks in place. And I have to say, it does look pretty cool. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and it's a massive pain in the backside to do. But it does look very, very cool indeed. Lots and lots of dark prismarine, lots of sea lanterns, tons and tons of quartz slabs, tons and tons of these quartz pillars as well. I am fresh out of these things. I don't think we're going to be able to do the other side, to be quite frankly honest with you. But I'm going to give it a go. No, I'm definitely not going to be able to do the other side. I've got 18 quartz pillars and then I've got enough to make... So I've got 34 quartz pillars. That's enough to do maybe one, two, probably three, four. So about halfway up. Yeah, let's quickly go out for a quick quartz mining session. I, I feel like that's necessary. Went out, got a whole bunch of nether quartz. I then came back and I have done half of the second half. So that means that we are now three quarters of the way done on the walls. But then that would only be three quarters of the entire project because we still have the ceiling left so there's some fraction left of the rest of the project I, I don't know where i was going with that that went down some kind of strange mathematical rabbit hole anyway we are now pretty much almost completed now i really don't know what to do up in this area so it's going to come up to here and then this is the height of it so i suppose i, I suppose we just kind of lock it off like that so it goes up to here and then stops, and then this is where the slabs will be from that point forth, I think. I think that works, yeah, and then this will be the Spirit Marine, and then this will be the Prismarine Bricks, and they will go up just like that. Okay, there we go. Both sides are now all completed. Oh, all right, so now it's time to do the roof, which thankfully is quite a lot easier than the side. So we just do that, then just do that and I've already messed it up. Whenever I say something is easier, I will mess it up. That's like the guaranteed first rule of Minecraft and probably general life. And it is done. It is done now, finally. I have to say that took a lot, a lot, a lot longer than I was first expecting. Like a lot longer, but it's here and it's looking really, really cool. If I do say so myself, there's one or two blocks missing, but we can sort that out. One thing that I do definitely need to do now, we can't leave it just not connected. So I'm going to connect the top and the bottom, but that'll be it, done. Oh, I never want to see another tunnel again. Top now looks good. That runs into that area there, and the bottom is also looking cool as well. I'm tempted to see if I can fly down this, let's see. No, the answer, the answer is definitely no. Let's just quickly run down to the bottom. I'll pick up my ender chest as I go, but it's just a simple connecting segment that does a bit of this. Very non-offensive, just, just nice stuff. Okay, let's pop back through into the base and we'll start work on the next project for today's Hammercraft episode. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> oh, I was almost a bigger idiot then. Wow, uh, I'm I'm a total moron though. I have been sat here. I just checked. I checked the drops from the passive mob farm, and I was scratching my head. I was like, this thing doesn't work. Exuma is useless at Minecraft. I wasn't actually thinking that, but I was thinking, you know, this thing's not working. What on earth's going on? I can't understand what the issue is. Fairly certain I did my item elevator right. Everything should be working. 
How stupid could I possibly be? I mean, really? How did I even do that? How could I build half an item elevator? What bizarre, just bizarre. Right, that should fix it. We should now start getting some drops actually from the passive mob farm because so far we haven't got any. We haven't got any and I've been trying to, I've been, I've been ripping my hair out trying to work out what on earth is going on with the passive mob farm. It's because I, I haven't connected it up. It's just the items have been sat up there despawning. Oh, yes, I have been reading through your comments for the past maybe 40, 30 or 40 episodes telling me about this piece of netherrack right here. I'm aware of it. I'm very aware of it. I pass it every single day. All I'm saying is, is just wait for episode 100. We're going to be doing something special with it. For the time being, it's going to be staying. Speaking of which, what on earth do you want me to do for episode 100? I had not thought. I have not given that any thought whatsoever. Nothing. Anyway, aside aside from that, uh, we have got a little bit of work to do over at the fully automatic wheat farm. This thing has been working well, you can see in this chest. We have got a whole bunch of items, but the issue is, is that this guy could be struck by lightning and be turned into a witch. That would be bad news, but also it doesn't look particularly good at this point in time. So I think I'm going to do just a little bit of work on it and make sure that it's all safe. Now the original plan for this was to do something like what I did up here, just a big stone slab platform where no mobs are going to spawn and it's going to prevent lightning from hitting this thing. But you know what? I actually quite like being able to see the wheat farm. So I think I might actually do this out of glass. I might make it out of glass in the central section. Now the reason for this is, is also because I've just walked past my map that I have down at the bottom there. And I want to be able to see the farm on the map. I think it would look really cool if you can see the farm on the map as opposed to just two big slabs in this area here. So I'm going to have to do quite a lot of smelting on this one. There we go. That looks much cooler. This is actually quite a cool looking thing. Now I feel like we should also line up some sea lanterns maybe with this area just to brighten things up a little bit. Oh! I was so confused then. So we have got... I've got the dynamic light on in Optifine. I, I couldn't work out what the heck happened. I've been seeing that throughout the entire episode. I'm like, what on earth is happening? Like, the light keeps coming on on my screen. I don't know what's going on. It's because I've got dynamic lights on. So as soon as I pull out a light, I can then use it to light up areas. <laughs> Oh, I've been so confused. I'm such an ape. Another thing with this farming module was the fact that it seemed to be a bit of a wild west. There was just things just left around. We had like the beacon beam structure underneath and we had furnace smelter and things. So those are now all removed too. And this place should now be looking considerably cooler. Awesome. That looks really good. Really, really cool. All right, now one thing is that the next plan was I was actually going to hook this up into my storage system, but the storage system is full, completely filled. So we have got bread goes up to here and then that's it. I don't know what I was thinking. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's 12 different types of item I can have in this storage system. Why did I think I only needed 12? There's so many more different farms I could have in here Bizarre. So we're going to have to extend this out at some point, but that'll be a massive project, one that I'm definitely not going to be taking on today. I also need to do some, some a little bit of maintenance work, I think, because this place is getting a bit messy. <laughs> uh, but next up, what I actually want to try is I want to just quickly refresh the map and see what the map is actually looking like. Now, because I'm stupid and don't understand how maps work, I spent a good length of time just rotating it, thinking that right-clicking on it would update it for some bizarre reason. I forget that you have to pick it up. And then, do I have to fly over there? I think I have to go over there, don't I? Yes, of course I do. So, as I walk over, you can see more of the wheat farm is actually coming into vision. Now, I think that's everything for that. Are there any par other parts of the map that we've done? Oh, the iron farms aren't, aren't on there. Let's quickly pick that up. So, those should be loading in now as well. When did we do the map? I swear it wasn't that long ago. So there we go. That is the current state of the farming areas 
of my base. Now, I need to do some serious work on these things. I want to get each and every one of the modules looking like this one. This one's pretty much there. I do feel like we need a few farms on the outskirts, but these two, they're definitely looking pretty sparse. So we need to do some extra bits and bobs there. So let me know what sort of farms you want to see. I know I've seen a lot of your requests for a tree farm, especially a wither powered one. I'm a bit scared to build a wither one inside the base. So I think I might make, you know what? I'm gonna make a super tree farm. I've just come up with a really cool way to do it. Yeah, that thing's going to be epic. So that will probably be going on over there. Then we need to do some stuff in these corners as well. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode on the Hermitcraft server. Uh, it's been a bit of a crazy one, a bit all over the place. I also just want to say before I go, in fact, there's two things I want to say before I go. Number one, thank you all for all of the birthday messages. There were thousands of them. I think there was about 17,000 comments on the previous episode of Hermitcraft, which is pretty insane. But also, the next thing that I want to say is that I released a film yesterday on the filming channel. It's about the Google Pixel 2. I'm sure you're really going to enjoy it. So I'll put a link to that one on the end screen and also down in the description. But anyway, if you did enjoy, please drop that like button. If you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.